for example, a high arch should be used if the wood is relatively soft, and then a low arch should be used if the wood is hard. This counteracts the weakness or strength of the wood against the downward pressure of the strings. And whatever you do to the top, you have to do the reverse to in the back. Once the outside of the arch has been shaped, the inside must be scooped out. The craftsmen use a special jig which stops the drill bit a preset distant from the under surface. All right, we can start. This allows Mr. Bowers to remove the bulk of the wood very quickly. He knows he's safe as long as he doesn't go past the bottoms of the holes. Spinet keys have no lead weights or other mechanical aids to help them return. However, the key fronts are beveled or undercut to minimize weight at that end of the key. Spinet keys can be covered with a number of materials, wood, bone, tortoise shell, or ivory. Water makes the ivory cut easier. Large pieces of ivory must be sealed with shellac. The tusk has growth rings, like a tree, and will dry out, shrink, and crack if not protected. Thin slices are not so prone to this. I see these cracks only went in about an eighth of an inch on the end, Mark. So we can set it up in a miter box now and start cutting these key fronts.
George, would you like to check the graduation on this back? All right. The bag is not an even thickness all over. It is thinner at the edges than in the middle. This helps the vibration. By adjusting the exact thickness of the middle of the arch, the back can actually be tuned. Want to get the bow? All right. In order to minimize the possibility of wolf notes in a violin, we tune our plates. This is done by comparing the plate to a tuning fork and either bowing or tapping on it in various ways to produce a musical note. This only seems to affect the plate in the very center area, however, and one has to use his own discretion in thinning out the plates towards the edges. We tune our tops and backs a semitone apart. This makes the instrument not have any specific resonant frequency of its own. If the instrument does have a resonant frequency somewhere, it will be greatly amplified whenever that note is bowed. This is referred to as a wolf note. Different builders will use favorite tunings of their own in preparing the tops and backs of violins. It does affect the tonal outcome of the instrument. If you use lower frequencies, in general, the tone will be somewhat darker than if you use higher frequencies. Each builder decides over a long period of time what works best for him. After the back is shaped and tuned, the purfling can be installed. This is a banding consisting of three strips of wood, usually ebony, holly, ebony. Its main purpose is to strengthen the edges of the top and back, but it also serves as a decorative element. First, a groove is cut around the edge of the back. Then the glued together strips are bent on the bending iron and fitted into the groove. I think the underside of this is ready to be screwed down. Do you want to have a look at it? All right, but uh, let's try that piece of purfling over there first. I want to see how this joint matches up. When the bee stings in the corners fit perfectly, the purfling can be glued in. Several days are allowed to let the purfling shrink, and then it is planed and scraped flush with the surface. The back is now ready to be glued to the sides. Harpsichord strings are plucked by devices called jacks. The jacks must be held in precise alignment, yet free to move up and down when the keys are pressed. This is the job of the register. To make a register, Mr. Hansen first cuts grooves in a walnut board. A hand router helps make them a precise size. Absolute precision is necessary in making a register. Only a few thousandths of an inch of play is allowable. The board is cut into smaller pieces and assembled over the keys. Each block has two grooves, and each groove must line up precisely with one of the keys. This is all complicated by the fact that on a spinet, the strings, and therefore the jacks, run at an angle to the keys. Once lined up, the blocks can be glued together and the excess removed.
The register is glued into the case. The next step is building and installing the soundboard. Looks like a good fit. This hand. Adjust it for the thickness of the soundboard there. <laughs> The soundboard is the most important part of the spinet for musical tone. It is made of spruce, usually with the grain running in the same direction as the strings. The edges have been tapered more in the treble than the bass to help it vibrate better. And the bridge across which the strings will run has been attached with nails and glue. The soundboard is glued into the case by the edges and held in place by go bars sprung up against the ceiling. This must be done quickly before the glue cools, but carefully, as one slip would drive a go bar right through the soundboard. Seems pretty tight, all the way down. 